What's going on everybody? This is Brian from SneakerFiles.com recapping the news and like always there's a ton to talk about and if you got a second greatly appreciate a thumbs up in the last few videos we have been crushing the like goals so let's see if we can hit 600 likes on this video also if you're not subscribed yet make sure to hit the red button just below the highlights would be additional information on the air jordan 1 gold top 3 as well as the air jordan 11 black stingray which is part of the Ares collection. In addition, we have a detailed look at the Nike SB Dunk Low Pigeon in Black, some info on the Adidas Yeezy Boost 350 V2 releasing in 2018, and we have additional information on collaborations coming in 2018 from Off-White and Nike. We do have more from Jordan Brand, more from Nike, and one thing from Reebok, but without wasting too much of your time, let's jump into the news. Reebok and Future has officially unveiled their new collaboration which is a hybrid of the Reebok Insta Pump Fury and the Reebok Kamikaze 2 Mid and is known as the Reebok Furikaze. The model is inspired by Scorpions and that's due to Future being a Scorpio. I think this is the first time that an artist has collaborated on a shoe which is inspired by astrology. A bit odd but the look is still clean. Looking closer, they feature suede across the uppers which mimics that of the small hairs found on a scorpion. In addition, his own label Free Bands lands on the lace tips and 5 star graphic on the heel. Completing the look, we have a gum outsole. So for those that are interested in purchasing, they drop on November 11th and the retail price will be $250. They will be available at select Reebok retailers including online at Reebok.com. It appears in 2018 the Yeezy Boost 350 V3 won't release, but there will be an update on the Adidas Yeezy Boost 350 V2. On screen, this is a mock-up done by Yeezy Mafia, so it's very possible we may see something a little bit different when it comes to the retail. Now the shade used across the primate is something similar to that of the Moonrock Hue. Now what stands out the most is the SPLY 350, as you can see it kind of just goes diagonal and a little bit of a different style of graphic that is done in teal you can also see little bits of teal in the prime knit as well as wrapping the back heel at this time we don't have a specific time frame we just know that they're coming in 2018 and i assume the retail price will be 220. the kentucky wildcats have their own nike pg1 which is a player exclusive they won't be releasing but I wanted to share this image and as you can see we have blue running across the entire uppers, speckled detailing across the midsole, we have white accents and then on the back hill we have the school's branding. Now like I mentioned these aren't going to release but on a side note I wanted to ask you guys do you want me to include player exclusives for NBA teams as well as NCAA teams in these news videos. Quick update and new images on the Stash Nike Air Zoom Spiridon collaboration. Now, they are going to drop at select Nike sportswear retailers on November 10th. Currently, we don't have a retail price, but once that is available, I'll make sure to let you guys know. Now, this pair comes in Harbor Blue, Heritage Cyan, and Midnight Navy. They also feature reflective 3M detailing, while Stash's logo is seen on the hill. Here is something that will be releasing from Nike and Paul George. This is the Nike PG1 Bright Violet. And as you can see, that shade of purple runs across the base, which includes a mixture of suede and mesh. In addition, we have white across the midsole, which has some black speckled detailing, the same shade that a black lands on the Nike swoosh, the liner, the tongue, and the outsole. For those that want to grab this pair, December 1st is the release date, and retail price will be 110 on November 11th, Nike will release the Nike Air Vapor Max Heritage Pack, which includes two color options that are inspired by the classic Nike Air Max 95. Those two colors includes the grape and neon. The grape will be for women, while the neon will be for men. Like I mentioned, November 11th is the release date. Retail price each is $190. They will be available at Nike.com. We still have a couple more Nike Air Vapor Max releases to talk about. On the screen is the mid-top version, and that comes in navy blue as well as red. Now, as you can see, they do feature an extended collar as well as a bungee cord lacing system and a new heel counter. Blue covers the entire uppers, and then we have red that wraps the heel but kind of outlines the heel counter, and then that is applied to the Nike swoosh on the toe. Following, we have speckled detailing on the upper part of the midsole while the full-length visible air unit is intact and that is clear. Now, we don't have a release date or a retail price, but they are expected to release sometime during the winter season. Not long ago, the Nike Air Vapor Max bread released overseas, and now they're going to make a stateside appearance during December. This pair, as you can see, features black with a little bit of gray across the fly knit upper, 
Then we have Dark Team Red, which lands on the Nike swoosh and is applied to the full length Vapor Max Air unit as well as the outsole. The release date is set for December 1st in the United States and the retail price is $190. The Nike LeBron 15 Red Fly Knit, also known as Wine, is set to release sometime this month, and we have additional images. As you can see, that shade of wine covers the battle knit uppers, while red is applied to the tongue and heel pull tabs, which is constructed with leather. Following, we have white on the midsole with some speckled detailing and a somewhat translucent outsole. Well, at least it appears that way in some of these images, and no set release date, but they are expected to release sometime during this month, and the retail price will be $185. When LeBron James in the Cavs took on the Washington Wizards the other day, he was wearing this pair of the Nike LeBron 15 strap. And it's known as Long Live the King because it features that across the straps done in metallic gold. In addition, we have olive green that runs across the base. We have some white that hits the midsole and a unique graphic on the liner. Now, it isn't known if this specific pair is actually going to release. However, the Nike LeBron 15 strap will release sometime in the future. For this pair, let me know your thoughts. Do you think Nike Basketball should drop them? After a handful of preview images, we finally have a detailed look at the Nike SB Dunk Low Pigeon in black. So I've gone over these shoes a handful of times and obviously the highlight would be the pigeon embroidered by the heel but as you can see they come in all black and they are expected to drop this week November 11th. We don't have a retail price as of yet and on a side note they are expected to be on the limited side. They do have a QS tag which means quick strike and although some people are disappointed with this shoe there is some hype behind it and I'm sure within a day or so they will sell out. Hiroshi Fujiwara recently shared his one of one fragment design Nike SB Dunk Low Black Pigeon which was a gift from Jeff Staple. Now the color combination resembles that of the Black Pigeon release but the difference here is the fragment lightning bolt logos that land on the lateral side debossed by the hill. Now on the medial side the Pigeon logo is embroidered. Now these aren't going to release however like I just mentioned the Black Pigeon the retail pair will debut on November 11th. As some of you may know, the collaborations with Off-White and Nike will expand into 2018. In last week's video, I gave you a heads up that there's going to be two Off-White Nike Air Vapor Max releases. One comes in black, total crimson and clear. The other one comes in white, total crimson and black. But now we have additional models which we'll go over. We also have an Off-White Nike Air Force One that's going to release in black and it's spelled M. SILV which I believe is a abbreviation for metallic silver. We also have two additional off-white Nike Air Presto releases. One will come in black and white. The other one will come in white and black. Last but not least is the Nike Air Max 90 which will come in black. So the retail price for the Air Max 90 is 160. The Air Presto will cost you 160. The Air Force One will retail at 200 and the Air Vapor Max will cost 250. Now we don't have a set release date, not even a time frame, but sometime in 2018. Now the image on the screen is not an actual release, this is just a Photoshop just to use as some sort of placeholder. Remember how I said Nike Air Max Day will no longer be, but it will be Nike Air Max Month, which will take place during March? Well, we have more information and more releases that are coming. And just yesterday, we found out that the Atmos Nike Air Max Animal Pack 2.0, which will release during March of 2018, Air Max Month. And this is a recreation, sort of a recreation from the 2006 release. Included is the Nike Air Max 1 and the Nike Air Max 95. Each will feature various animal prints throughout and the biggest change is from the original release would be the original cream pony hair that is applied to the uppers. Well, that is no longer. It will feature black. No specific release date or retail price, but like I mentioned, March 2018 is when they're expected to drop and you can expect both to more than likely be limited. Last week I shared images of the Air Jordan 1 Summer of High in Sunset Tint. Now we know that it's officially a pack and there's three additional colorways releasing, so making it a total of four. This will include Hydrogen Blue, Barely Grape, Silt Red, and Sunset Tint. In addition, the four models will feature white across the midsoles and metallic gold accents. For a premium look, they're constructed with suede along with satin, while the Nike swoosh on the side is embroidered. No retail price for the four, but all will release on November 25th. And once we have more information, definitely we'll make sure to update you. To celebrate the Chicago Cubs winning the World Series back in 2016, Jordan Brand designed a limited edition Air Jordan Cubs championship pack 
for Dexter Fowler. And for those that don't know, Dexter Fowler is an outfielder and is signed to Jordan Brand. Two models are included in the pack which features the Air Jordan 11 and the Air Jordan 12. The Air Jordan 11 features blue while constructed with a mixture of mesh, leather, and patent leather. In addition, the Jumpman branding by the heel is done in red. The Air Jordan 12 features white leather on the uppers, which is paired with blue across the mudguard as well as part of the midsole, liner, and back heel, while metallic gold accents are seen throughout. Both are completed with Dexter's number 24 on the heel, while the insoles feature the Cubs logo. Don't expect the two to release, but if a similar color scheme did, I definitely would be in for the Air Jordan 12 and the Air Jordan 11. A lot of people feel that the Air Jordan 11 Black Stingray, which is part of Jordan Brand's Heiress collection and is releasing for women, should also release in adult sizes. I truly believe that and it's very possible that they could have because here Rip Hamilton shares that he has an adult size of the Air Jordan 11 Black Stingray. He showed this image on Instagram and he said big shout out to Jumpman23 for hitting it out of the park on these his and hers Air Jordan Airs. Now the highlight here would be his and hers. So as you can see this is obviously a larger size and once again I do feel that Jordan Brand should release these in adult sizes. But on a good note is that the rumor is they will be in extended grade school sizing up to a 10.5Y instead of the traditional 9.5Y. So that technically gives me a shot at getting a pair and wearing them, but I know a lot of viewers are going to miss out because of that. But in the comments, let me know your thoughts if you think that Jordan Brand should release these in adult sizes. I'm sure most of you feel that they should. The Air Jordan 1 Gold Top 3 released at Complex Con this past weekend. A lot of people have been going crazy for them. I've seen a lot of love for them. Not too many people hate them. I think the worst I've seen is that they wish that the color blocking was the same. Not, you know, one featuring black on the panels, the other one featuring white, etc. Now, if you weren't at Complex Con and you missed out on these, there is good news. But the crazy part of this is I've been seeing resale prices go for like $1,000, $1,200. The lowest I think I've seen was like $800. That's just insane. Now, in last week's video, I mentioned that I believe these were going to be the all-star release. And according to DJ Folk, that is the case. This is going to drop during February of 2018. Apparently for all-star weekend. And this does match up with the theme because we've seen the Air Jordan 9, which comes in the same colorway. They feature black, white, metallic gold. They also have patent leather throughout. And the design is similar to that of the Air Jordan 1 Top 3, which released back in 2016. Like I mentioned, February 2018, we don't have a specific release date. Retail price will be 160. Now take note that the name on this is Air Jordan 1 Retro High OG NRG. NRG usually stands for energy, which means some sort of limited release. I hope that isn't the case with this pair because a lot of people want them, so they should definitely be a GR. But down the road, we should have more information. And that recaps the news. Like always, we post it first on sneakerfiles.com and then we take it to YouTube. So what I'm feeling from this video enough to actually buy on release date or close to it would be the Nike SB Dunk Low Pigeon in black. I really like those. Again, I do wish it was more like the OG mold of the Nike SB Dunk, but I can't change that obviously. The Atmos Nike Air Max pack is something I'm interested in getting. Um, I'm not 100% on that yet. Obviously, I won't be able to get those on sale. They're going to be limited. I assume they will be. And there's always hype around them. The Air Jordan 11 Black Stingray, if they are available up to a size 10.5Y, then yeah, I'm going to go after a size 10. But like I mentioned prior to this, there isn't confirmation on that just yet. Last but not least is the Air Jordan 1 Gold Top 3. Definitely going to go after those. I like those a lot. I would have been fine if they were both the same blocking or like they are. I guess I'm just a sucker for metallic gold and black. I think it just looks really dope. But leave a comment below and let me know from this video what you liked or what you disliked. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned to sneakerfiles.com. And if you haven't yet, Make sure to subscribe.